Great. Thanks, Chad. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, it's great to see you all here. Let me just start with a few words before I introduce Sashi. Uh, first, I want to thank Steve Bishotti uh, for giving me this job. I've had 18 great years, and I'll be eternally grateful to Steve. Second, I want to thank all the people I've worked with, so many great people over the years. Um, I mean, they've made my job a real joy. I've enjoyed coming to work every day. Um, I can't say every moment is the greatest moment in the world. We've had a few losses along the way, but it's not because of the staff. Hardworking, loyal, everything you'd want uh, for colleagues to work with. And I've thoroughly enjoyed it, so thank you all very much. Uh, let me say a few words about how we got to Sashi. Um, <clears throat> I told Steve last uh, September that I was going to retire uh, at the end of the 2021 season. Uh, he said, fine, but you've got to help me find a replacement. So I began a search. We did not hire an outside firm. I uh, spoke to someone at the NFL I knew and I could trust. I told him I was leaving. I said I would like to, for him to give me a couple of names of people that could be good candidates, either in the NFL office or at other teams around the league. Um, and he made some inquiries around the league and telling people he spoke to that an NFL team was thinking about hiring a new president. So I came up um, with, a, with a list of names there. I spoke to Ozzy about it. I spoke to Eric about it. Other than that, I didn't tell people, and John, other than that, I did not tell people here at the Ravens that I was going to retire. I started to talk again to Steve, and Steve gave me two major principles he wanted me to follow in selecting candidates. Uh, number one, he wanted someone from outside the organization. Um, when I was hired, I came in from the outside. He thought it was helpful and useful to have someone with a new perspective to come in uh, to take my job as president. And I agreed with that. I thought that made a lot of sense. So that was one guiding principle. The second guiding principle is we wanted the person coming in um, to be someone who was not going to bring an entourage. Uh, when I came, Steve told me, uh, you come by yourself. Don't try to bring all your friends over here. I want you to come here, get to know everybody. Uh, and after a year, a year or so, maybe you can make some changes if you think you need to. So we wanted someone who was not going to insist on having an entourage. So those guiding principles, I also know a lot of people around the league. I know other people. So we came up with a list. I presented a list to Steve of, I think it was six or seven names, gave Steve the background of the people, told something, everything I knew about them. I made some inquiries about some of the people on the list. Um, and over time, uh, you know, over a 60-day period or so, Steve really began to focus on Sashi's background, resume, and experience. Um, and so, and Sashi was someone that I knew from my prior life as a lawyer at a law firm in Washington. Ozzy knew him and thought highly of him. Eric knew him and also thought highly of him. We also made a couple of discreet inquiries um, outside our building about Sashi, and they all came back extremely positive. Um, I look, when you look at his background, <clears throat> it's a really a strong background. I mean, he's got a legal background, which is helpful, not, it's certainly not vital, but, in, but it's not insignificant. Uh, but he's, he had been in the, two different teams in the league for 13 years or so in total, which gave him valuable experience both on the football side and the non-football side. Most of his experience was on the, the business side, the legal side of football, not the football. But his background on the football side was also helpful. And then he had three years or so uh, at, at Monumental Sports, which owns an NBA and a WNBA team. So he had that experience as well. And that was all very valuable. And, and I knew him as a person, and I interviewed him several times very closely uh, this past year. I uh, had a high degree of confidence uh, that he would be really good for us here. Uh, Steve also spoke to someone that, uh, that Steve and I know and both respect, and he knew Sashi and also recommended him highly. So we ended up, basically, Steve focused on Sashi. Uh, we decided that I would sit down with Sashi, negotiate an agreement, um, and then we would then present Sashi to Steve. Um, and so Sashi and I went down and met with Steve. Um, three, it took about a three-hour meeting, I would guess. It went extremely well. I was very confident that it would go well, and I thought they would get along well together, and I think they will get along well together. So at the end of the meeting, um, Sashi was offered the job. 
Um, we, uh, the only glitch we had really was I hope to talk to the, our entire organization first. Uh, it leaked out, so we rushed out uh, with a press release uh, Friday afternoon or early evening. Um, and I still regret I didn't have a chance to meet with the whole organization first and introduce Sashi first to them, but we just didn't have that opportunity. But I think it was a smooth process. I have a high degree of confidence that Sashi is just going to be a, do an excellent job. Uh, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to you. No, thanks. Quite thorough. Uh, and, and I appreciate that, Dick. I want to start uh, by, by doing something I, I have not done and, and have gotten razzed about at home. I want to say hi to my two boys, Ellison and Robeson, <laughs> uh, my month-old daughter, Ananda, and my six-year-old two days ago, Zora, hi, and their beautiful mother, Paige. So with that. Um, but I want to say thank you to, um, I want to say thank you to Steve Bashotti. As, as Dick did as well, uh, for this opportunity. It's a great one, it's an honor. I also want to uh, pay some thanks to the gentleman sitting next to me, uh, and, and not only from the Ravens organization, but as a league, I think it's rare to be able to describe a leader uh, as having grace and, and class, uh, but that's exactly what Dick has represented, and he's been extremely steady uh, and wise in his leadership of the Ravens. Uh, someone that I know myself and, and other executives uh, admire uh, from afar, and I've been able to work with him. Uh, it's been just tremendous to watch him as a long, young lawyer and growing up as a, a front office executive. Uh, certainly have tried to model a lot of uh, what he's represented and will certainly uh, have some big shoes to fill, but I'm excited about the opportunity that uh, he and Steve have afforded me here. So um, with that, you know, I would say that I'm extremely honored to be here. Uh, this is a tremendous organization in a great uh, city, and um, it's been a, a great three or four weeks in this transition with Dick as I've gotten to know the staff, so I'm really excited to, to work with the staff here too. Uh, but as the new, newest member of the flock, so to speak, uh, I am, I'm really, really excited and honored to be part of this organization, part of this community. Uh, so I won't speak too long because I know there's a lot of questions, uh, but, but thank you for the opportunity and, and glad to be with you all today. Hi, Sashi. This is James Nensley with ESPN. Uh, with how everything in your last time in the NFL, with how everything ended with Cleveland, how important was it for you to try to get another opportunity in the NFL? And were you confident there would be another opportunity in the NFL for you? No, and I would say I think uh, probably enough's been written about Cleveland uh, in my days there, and it's time I've certainly turned the page. I think it's 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 plenty of time that we move on from that. Today's really about Baltimore and the Ravens, uh, and I didn't come out of or go into any opportunity looking for the next one. You know, every every time that I go into an opportunity, this one's no different. I'm really focused here, uh, and that's that's what I like to focus on, and we'll continue to so. Jeffrey, back from the Athletic. How are you doing? How are you doing? What is your immediate focus, and what do you view as some things long term that is going to kind of figure prominently in your time? Yeah, the organization is in really good set. Again, thanks, Dick. Um, it's in a really good place. Uh, there's just strong leadership, you know, across the board on the football side. You know, guys that I've I've admired and, and watched and learned from, Ozzy, Eric, John. Uh, and their leadership. So I, I don't have anything, you know, that, that is an immediate focus short term other than getting to know the people and, and the folks on the business side and the football side both. Uh, and I've had several weeks of meetings as I referenced before and, and getting up to speed on kind of where we are in the season and getting ready for the fall and summer for the, for the players to come back. Obviously we have a draft in a few weeks, but I know we're going to be in great shape under Eric's leadership there. Um, so I think long term, you know, the sustained success is really the focus here. That's been the calling card of the Ravens uh, and will continue to be uh, our focus as, as I come in as president. Jerry Sandusky, voice of the Ravens. Thank you, Jerry. Dick and then Sashi, knowing what you know now, Dick, 18 years after taking this job, what's the single biggest piece of advice you give to Sashi at the front end of his team? <laughs> I'll give the, uh, I've given him the same advice that Steve gave to me. Your first job is to get everyone to like you. 
your job is so much easier if you earn their respect. And you can't earn their respect, and they can't, you can't get them to like you by giving them more money either. You have to do it the hard way. <laughs> you got to work at it and get to know everybody, uh, spend some time getting to know people. Be much more challenging for Sashi because we're such a larger organization than we were in 2004 when I first started. But I think that's very important. And that's actually the advice Steve gave him already. Yeah. <clears throat> Is what's the number one thing you want to know on day one in your new job? How'd you do it? How'd you win that Super Bowl? Um, uh, seriously, I think, um, as, as Dick said, I think great organizations are about the people. Every great organization is really the same. It's about the people. Um, and so getting to understand the people and how best I've asked every group and every individual I've met, how, how has Dick best supported you? Um, and, and what has he provided you uh, in excelling in your in your respective job? And and that's really the question for me. And and I think, you know, you can come in and have these lofty thoughts, but the reality is, our great strength comes from within and our people here. So getting to know them and understanding and forming those relationships is really important and will be the focus for me. John Schaefer, Baltimore Sun. Uh, for Dick and then for Sashi, um, Dick. What did you see in Sashi back when you were working with him in the legal setting? Um, you know, and, and then for Sashi, you mentioned wanting to use Dick's career as a model for your own. Um, I guess specifically, what about you know, how he's kind of handled operations here it is worthy of emulation? You know, I, what I saw in him is a smart guy, very smart, has good judgment. Um, he's thoughtful. He, he, he always, I always, as a young lawyer, you, you, a lot of guys come in thinking they know everything, and of course, we don't know anything as young lawyers. So, and he didn't pretend to know everything. Um, good, I mean, you keep coming back to his people skills, his poise and his presence. I think people here will like him. I think he's gonna, I just think he's gonna do an outstanding job. I saw a lot of those qualities in him as a young lawyer. Um, and over the, you know, I've talked to a lot of people who work with him in Jacksonville and Cleveland over the years. I remember going to an owner's meeting years ago, and Wayne Weaver was then the owner of Jacksonville, and he was talking about Sashi because he knew I knew him. Um, I mean, that's been the history of, of wherever Sashi has gone. Uh, the owners of the Cleveland Browns who let him go still think highly of Sashi. So that's, I think that says a lot about him as well. And I saw that in him as a young lawyer. I think composure uh, and the way Dick led was, was it's, it's an attractive quality. You know, when you're around someone who, uh, in a law firm environment, it's a unique environment, uh, but someone who treated people um, with, with care uh, and extremely, extremely bright uh, and wise, brought a lot of wisdom to, um, you know, some really complicated problems that we were trying to solve for clients. And so just the way he would actually you know, assess, analyze, lead, you know, and solve problems uh, and, and represent clients. And a very much a service model, you know, service of, of clients and service of people around him. Um, but he also, you know, taught, he developed, you know, young lawyers. And there's a number of us out here, because uh, I'm not the only one that comes from the Dick Cass tree. Did you know you have a tree? Um, but, but there's a number of us that have all, um, you know, benefited from being in and around him. And I, I think if you ask the folks here, uh, at the uh, Under Armour's Performance Center, uh, we, 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 we hear the same things as I've talked to people here. It's just the ability that he has to bring people in, involve them, um, empower them, and develop them. Uh, and uh, it's infectious and, and contagious, so it's a, it's a great quality or, or host of qualities that Dick, Dick had. And I saw that when I was younger, and now I haven't been able to work alongside him for a month of this overlap, which has been a tremendous opportunity. Uh, it's been no different. Yeah, Cliff Brown, uh, Baltimore Ravens Media. Uh, Sashi, you're only the second black NFL team president. Um, how much do you feel like maybe your legacy here could help open up opportunities, not only here, but around the league for not only minorities, but women who haven't been able to ascend that position? And is there any way that you feel like that could be part of your legacy in this position? Well, I would hope so. Um... I, it's a, that's a big, complicated topic, and um, you know the first thing I would say is we just shouldn't be here, right? We shouldn't be here in 2022, uh, and being the only the second African American, we still haven't have a, a woman who's 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 um, 
at this point um, ascended, although I think there's probably some arguments that's been one or two that haven't had exactly that title. Um, and we, we need to do better. Um, Wall Street needs to do better. Yeah, and, and, and the NFL is no different. Uh, but, you know, I would say throughout my career, I've looked to, to Baltimore as a place that, you know, through Ozzy and the, the model that he represented here um, and others, Jim Caldwell, who have come through here, uh, that have taken some positions that you didn't see brown, black faces in, uh, not only take those positions, but excel, right, at championship levels and win. Uh, those titles has been a tremendous example. So I'm, I'm hopeful to the extent um, you, you certainly want to see more balance and change and opportunity for women and, and, and others, um, minorities. And to the extent that my example can, can, uh, can certainly open up some doors, then, then great. Um, but I hope it's not contingent upon the success of, of one individual. I think this is something that, that we as a league, we as an organization need to be committed to, regardless of your background um, and, uh, or color or gender. And we, we will do better here. It's gonna be a commitment. I know it's important to Steve, it was important to Dick. Um, I think that's why you know, Baltimore has been a model on this topic and will certainly continue to be under, under my leadership. Melissa Cannon, WBAL. Um, yeah, first of all, Matthew, you've had a lot of time to reflect in the last month or so. Is there a particular moment that you describe that you cherish here for the last 18 years the most? Well, you always, you always have to talk about the Super Bowl. <laughs> Of course, but you know, I, I think it's hard. I don't measure it in terms of particular moments. I think what I think about is sort of the, over the 18 years, how this organization has grown, how we've uh, grown, uh, I mean, in, in the sense that the community uh, really looks to us as a source of pride. Um, and I think we've become more and more deeply embedded in the community. Uh, we've only been here a little over 25 years. And I think it takes a long time for a professional team to become really part of the community in the way we have. And I'm, I'm really proud of the way that we have really developed into an organization that people look to with a lot of pride. And um, I think that's important in Baltimore. It's important in any NFL city, but I think we're doing a good job with that and we just have to keep it going. And Sachi, for you, is there any moment that you think about when you were growing up or maybe in your upbringing a little bit where you thought that this would be a I wish I could say so, but I wasn't, uh, I wasn't that focused and, and strategic in my planning. My sister was. When she was four, she said she would be a pediatrician. She is a pediatrician today. Um, I wanted to be an uh, NBA point guard or uh, uh, probably a cornerback. Uh, neither of those came true. So I'm glad that I was able to marry my passion with my profession here, um, but I, I, I can't say that I aspire to be exactly in this place, but I'm grateful for the opportunity. Luke Jones, WNST. Uh, Sashi, you didn't get to play in the NFL or the NBA, but you have had the opportunity now to work in both. Have, having worked in the NFL and then working recently in the NBA, how is that experience different, and how do you think that NBA experience and working with Monument will help you in this new position? Yeah, it, perspective. Gives you some perspective. Uh, I think from the outside, the leagues look very similar. From the inside, uh, when you live them, they're, they're quite different, and the nuances are, are quite different. They're very different culturally. Um, but, but I think taking what I learned in the NFL to the NBA was helpful, and taking what I learned in the NBA back to the NFL will be helpful uh, for me. And the, I want to thank the folks at Monumental Sports, Ted Leonsis and his partners, uh, were, were great. It was a great experience for me there. Uh, I think I grew, certainly, and, and have a lot to take away. Um, but seeing uh, a team operation and a business run from the inside on the NBA was, was great. And also see how that league operated in that system. So, you know, I won't bore you with all the nuanced details, uh, but, but suffice it to say, uh, there are some real differences that, that, you know, exist that you can learn from. And, you know, that, that scope and range of experiences and responsibilities helps develop, uh, you know, your mindset and how you would approach this opportunity. We're going to ask it with Fox Baltimore. Just for both of you, how valuable is this transition to have a month's time together to, to teach, to learn, to lean? And what kind of have the days been like during this process? 
Well, I guess I'll go for I mean, they've been great. It's been fun to reconnect uh, on a personal level with Sashi. We've spent a lot of time together over the last month or so. Uh, we'll probably continue the transition for another week or so. And um, it's, been, it's been really great to get to know him again. It sort of reinforced my feelings about how well suited he is for this job as well. So that's, that's been great. Yeah. I think, you know, being able to meet the staff with Dick and, and bounce ideas that I'm hearing from the rest of the staff off Dick and get his perspective has been great. Uh, we've shared a lot of stories and laughs over the month. Uh, that was that was great, too. He's certainly got a better record against me than I had against him, so he hasn't been shy about reminding children. me. Yeah, I do have more children. <laughs> a lot more children. Um, uh, but but he has not been shy about reminding me of, uh, of his win-loss record against me, so. Jerry Coleman, Sashi, and Dick from 1057 the Fan Dick, congratulations. Thank you. Um, Sashi and Dick What's uh, the last 24 hours? It seems like we can't go more than 24 hours without a Pro Bowl player being traded. Uh, the NFL has just completely gone upside down in a lot of ways. Maybe Dick, you can speak to this too. How do you remain fiscally responsible? I know the owners' meetings are coming up. I don't know if you're planning on going, Sashi, but. So that will be a big discussion next week at the way things have changed with some of the petitions and uh, salaries that are being out. I'll just come okay. first. I mean, the, the great thing about the NFL and the reason I think the NFL is so successful is because of parity. And parity is driven by the salary cap in the CBA and by the national rel revenues, which are largely driven by national TV revenues. And we share those equally. So the fact that some teams are spending more this year, um, that doesn't mean that, uh, that that really shouldn't affect anybody because you look at the salary cap over a number of years and you manage to it over a number of years. If, if you look at the 10-year CBA that expired after the 2020 season, over that 10-year period, I mean, the aggregate salary cap, if you add up each of the 10 salary caps, was like $1.526 billion. We ended up spending $53 million over that amount. So roughly we're five million over a year. The cap in the end drives you, in terms of cash spending, drives you roughly back to the cap. So teams might spend a lot of money this year and next year, three, four, five, six years from now, that'll come back and they're gonna have to, they'll have less money to spend. So I think every year you're gonna see some teams spending a lot more money than other teams, but in the end it comes back to the median, to the, basically to the salary cap. Uh, in terms of the way the uh, price of the quarterback has gone up, and obviously that's a hot topic in this town with Lamar. Uh, <laughs> do you plan on uh, dealing with that in any manner, or do you leave that in no, Eric's hands? That's, that's, that's in Eric's hands. Certainly, uh, as Dick was, uh, I'll be around um, to, to bounce ideas off, but Eric's been a master. You know, he's learned from a master. Um, and, you know, I think when those transactions, the volume of transactions go up, I like our odds. Um, you know, certainly the, the Ravens over the years, uh, we have, have been a group that has been um, highly transactional and really good at it. Um, and so they've been able to continue to develop players and transact with players to keep the roster fresh and competitive. Uh, and keep their marquee players, but also, uh, you know, have a, a pipeline of young talent here too. So I think COVID certainly has impacted all the leagues and, and that's been a wrinkle in terms of the salary cap and what, what challenges teams are facing now just because of the, the flux there. Um, but, uh, you know, this will play out in time. And uh, again, if we line up with uh, the GMs, 32 across the league, I like our chances with Eric. It's actually Kevin Richardson with the Baltimore Sun. Uh, before I ask you a question, I want to thank Dick for uh, being such a stand-up guy all these years and always approachable, always the nicest guy in the room. I want to thank you for being thank you. being that. Appreciate it. Um, when you heard that you were replacing a guy who was so highly respected throughout the NFL, what were your first thoughts about receiving the job? You know, it places a lot of responsibility on you. You know, as you mentioned, Dick has just been such a comprehensively good leader, and he's he's focused on the right things. He's led through crises. Uh, he's been someone. I think again, as I, I opened up, I think the league owes uh, a, a, not a small amount of gratitude to. He's just been a model. Uh, he's been great that way. Uh, and then I look and say, oh damn, you know, now it's on me. <laughs> and so I think, from my perspective, I really take it seriously. You know, in terms of the responsibility that. 
um, you know, you take that baton and it's, you know, it's coming at a good pace, you know, to use a, a relay and track and field analogy. Um, and so, you know, I think I'm up to the challenge. There are some big f shoes that I will not fill entirely day one, uh, but I look to growing into and, uh, and hopefully filling out in time. So it's, uh, it's an important responsibility and charge. Um, just as it has taken over, you know, the, one of the leadership roles here for this great organization and this great community of Baltimore. And, um, you yeah, know, I take all that very seriously. Speaking about you, David Andrade with Maximo Vance in Mexico. When you were on the different league like the NBA, what was the most important factor for you to decide to come back to football, but most importantly the Baltimore Ravens? It was not an easy decision. As I said, you know, I, I was in a, a great place. I think you're... Uh, privilege when you're in a career and you're leaving a great opportunity to a great opportunity and and the folks at Monumental and the opportunities I had there were were great and I, and I built relationships with you know the the athletes and coaches at the Mystics and the Wizards um, that that I'll cherish and those will be lifelong relationships that I'll, I'll sustain uh, but sitting down with one one the great uh, revere with which I held the the Ravens organization uh, certainly made me open to listen to what Dick had to say. And the more we sat down and I understood kind of what his role was and what they were asking me to do coming in, um, became more and more uh, comfortable and, and excited truly about the opportunity. Uh, and then you meet Steve and it's kind of whipped cream and, and cherry on top because um, he's just been such a great owner. Uh, he has such a great outlook and, um, and, and focus for the organization. So not an easy decision. Um, but a great opportunity that I feel really comfort, comfortable and confident in taking. Right, we'll close it out here. Kyle Barker, Baltimore Beat. Thank you. Uh, the past few weeks have seen the AFC and the AFC North specifically drastically improve over the duration. Um, how much, if any, does that change your uh, thoughts on salary cap management to compete in a division and a conference with such an influx of dollars? Uh, for me personally, not much at all. I think you always want to stay aggressive and within your plan, and I think um, Eric and John have done that masterfully uh, as a duo and individually. Uh, and so, you know, I think it's it's certainly, you know, this is the time of year, and this has been a, a high-volume offseason. Um, but every offseason there's these headlines with there's going to be some super team on paper, and we'll see when we get to the fall. We look forward to competing. Thanks, John. Thank you. Thank you.